So you want to go beachcombing, they say. Gotta work that close to rocks. As of lately, what I do for work is called beachcombing. We're basically harvesting logs that are on beaches or floating that would otherwise go to waste. Unfortunately, I'm not really allowed to film what I do for work, so I'm just going to show you guys some of the footage while towing through beautiful valleys and giant mountains and encountering wildlife in the middle of nowhere on the north coast. For the last four years, I've been deckhand on Tug and Barge. I've spent lots of time on the water and I think it's now time to move up. This job is such a great opportunity. In a way, it's somewhere in between a deckhand and a captain position because I am operating the vessel, but I'm being told what to do and how to do my job at all times. The first step to acquiring my captain's ticket is going to be to go to school for a little while. So I've got to sail 400 miles south to go to the city, but before I can do that, I definitely need to clean the bottom of my boat. It's well due for a paint job. Are you ready to get the boat out of the water? So yeah, that haul out was a lot more eventful than I would have liked. Because of the bowsprit and the force day, I have to go in reverse into the lift and then I have to make sure that it doesn't get hung up on the, the bottom uh, support of the rudder, which is 
exactly what happened. I couldn't see that uh, from up top because we had tied the straps together so it was being pulled forward by the other strap and it looked like it was where it was supposed to be but it was actually like still on the rudder and then we lifted the boat out of the water. I was still on board so I couldn't see what was going on. He lifted it out like 40 feet out of the water before I told him to put it back down if there was something wrong. So something was very wrong, the rudder came completely out of place and was uh, all crooked and preventing the prop from functioning. It did not damage the boat, like the only problem I ended up having was that the cable uh, for the steering system had popped out of place and it was the only thing preventing it from going back into place originally, so I just ended up using a big uh, rod and just pried it into place and gravity did the rest. And once we got the boat hauled out properly with the straps where they're supposed to be or sort of uh, maybe a little bit too far forward which led to the next problem. Lifted it with the straps and then kind of left it hanging while we were uh, scraping and pressure washing the bottom. I was done after an hour or so and then I went to look around for employees. No one was there so they had all gone home and left the boat in the straps. I, I was kind of worried about spending the nights just hanging there so I uh, I went and dragged some stands under the boat, um, but then the next morning when we went to move the boat, it, uh, well, you can see for yourself, the straps ended up sleeping almost two feet. It slipped a couple inches and then they kept slipping every time we hit a bump in the yard because it's like a gravel yard and it just kept shaking a little bit and then slipping a little bit. And then we got to uh, the spot that was about like 300 feet away that I was going to get stored at for a few days. For some reason they let the boat kind of lean over to one side and then it just had like a bit of a like 5 to 10 degree angle to the one side and I was pretty concerned about that, wasting the rest of the day basically. like the um, just making sure that the boat wouldn't just like fall over if there was a storm. We were officially leaving Denny Island. So we've been working on this tugboat for the past six months or seven months actually. And uh, I haven't done any sailing at all like since I've got here and uh, I need to go down to Ladysmith to get some marine tickets. So I'll be going to school for two months and uh, I need a place to stay and because I have a dog and I have a boat, well it makes it pretty easy to just uh, take the boat down there so it's uh, just about 300 miles. Um, I have two weeks to get there so I because of my motor situation, uh, we're doing three knots right now, and uh, that's our uh, most sustainable speed. Uh, because the faster I go, the faster it drains the battery. So I just uh, put along at three, three and a half knots, and uh, wait for the wind to show up. Because uh, right now it's uh, still pretty foggy. Visibility's not that great. It's just starting to lift off now. So we just left, we've covered about a mile, and uh, right now the battery uh, is sitting at 52.7 volts, and we're drawing 21 amps from the battery, uh, which uh, uh, concludes to 1,100 1, watts, so just about a kilowatt. So that's not too bad for three knots. They're uh, two completely different uh, lithium batteries that are uh, different amp hour ratings, and they are in parallel. And uh, so it's been really interesting to monitor uh, that right now, out of the 21 amps that is going into the motor right now, uh, we have 12 amps coming out of the Winston battery, which is the larger battery, which is 260 amp hours. And uh, I only have about 6 amps coming out of the Linac battery, which is uh, 140 amp hours total. Uh, which it's kind of great to see that the power is being distributed between the two batteries and a, like most of the load is coming out of the bigger battery which is what I was hoping for. Uh, I'm still learning about all this so it's all new to me. I've never done anything like it. And uh, so this, uh, the Winston battery, which is a DIY lithium battery. So they come as uh, three volt cells. They're big and heavy these cells and uh, you have to assemble them into a 48 volt so I have 16 cells and they're controlled by a BMS uh, which 
The batteries themselves are about 10 years old, so it was a bit of a gamble getting them, but so far they're doing amazing. They were out of a electric vehicle that was uh, for the city bylaw in Vancouver or Surrey and um, they had to replace the battery after 10 years I guess a warranty or uh, insurance thing and uh, so they were selling them for really cheap. The forecast was calling for 15 to 20 knot northwesterlies, but because of the shape of the inlets and the fjords around here, that's not always reliable and the wind is actually opposite to uh, what the forecast says, so it's right on the nose and I'll be going upwind close hauled for the next 60 miles. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming. Golden, I'll follow on golden, 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 golden things. spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow my golden 
Feet step over splinters of moon. 